Siegel served Bryson, climbed the ladder, and he proceeded on top of the roof. Mr. Anthony Williams was found with a gunshot wound to his back. He was missing some item. What we're looking for is that magic phone call for somebody to call in and say, hey, this is what I saw, this is whom I saw, and this is the information that I need to give you. Welcome to Crime Stoppers, South Florida Case Files. I'm Dick Maston, the director of Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. The purpose of this program is to share unsolved cases with as many South Florida viewers as possible, empowering you to do something about the violence on our streets. Every case is unsolved. Every case has a cash reward available. In other words, every case we feature is an opportunity for you to help your community and at the same time earn Crime Stoppers cash without even giving your name. Now let's get started. At 10.16 in the morning on August the 1st, 2011, Sego Serge Bryson was shot while answering the door at a residence in North Miami. Here's the story. I come from a family of nine. My mom had nine children and Serge was a baby of the family. We migrated here in 1978 where Serge and we've been inseparable. You know, we all did family events together. You know, he was just one of those kids that was full of energy. Serge and I, you know, got kind of more like a father figure, I would say, because I was the oldest boy in the family. I'm the eighth of nine kids. Um, Serge followed me, he was the baby. You know, he was my baby brother, you know. Um, growing up, he always had my back, he protected me. And he was my friend. I met Serge when we were in high school, in 10th grade at North Miami Senior High School. He has this smile and he just kept staring at me. And I had this attitude like, you know, don't look at me. And we were, you know, had this little flirtatious thing going back and forth. And I mean, I thought he was real sweet. We were together for two and a half years and I had his son, Kai. When I told him he was gonna have a baby, he was really happy. He was just the perfect dad. Serge had a set of twins before his son was born. He lived for those kids, and I think that's why he was trying to get his life together, going to school to make something with his life. Him and Maria had just got their place. They were getting ready to move in together because they had just had a newborn baby. Kai was probably about a month or two months old at the time when they was getting their new apartment. He didn't even get to move his things, and that was the day that after he kissed my mom and, and said, I'm going to go see a friend, and he never made it back home. On Monday, August 1st, 2011, my victim, Seiko Serge Bryson, was at a residence located in North Miami, 1210 Northwest 121 Street. The area is mainly residential. From two blocks away, you have commercial, restaurants, stores, businesses, but primarily it is a residential area. Seiko Serge Bryson was there visiting a friend. They were friends from high school, very close. His friend was in the shower, taking a shower, and there was a knock at the door. Welcome back, I'm Dick Maston. Let's take a moment to learn how Crime Stoppers works. When you call in your tip, you receive a code number. If your tip leads to an arrest, your code number is written on an envelope and your envelope is filled with reward money and cash. When the suspect is arrested, you call Crime Stoppers and you choose your pay date and location. You go to the location on that date and they give you the envelope. They ask you to count your money and once you count it, you're done. You never give your name, you never sign anything, no one ever knows who you are. It's that simple. On Monday, August 1st, 2011, my victim, Seiko Serge Bryson, was in an apartment in efficiency on the side of the house, located in North Miami. He was there visiting a friend. According to the facts that I have investigated and come across, my victim was there, he goes there every day. So it, was, it would not be uncommon that if there was a knock at the door, my victim 
Seagull Serge Bryson would answer the door. According to my witness, there was a silver, older model, Ford Taurus with two black males that were sitting in front of the residence. My witness drove up, he was in a truck, and he was there to purchase marijuana from someone named C. He turned around, looked at the guys as they were getting out of the car, and asked one of the guys, is C home? One of the unknown black males responded, we're about to see. My victim answers the door. He was confronted with these two unknown black males. The witness waits in the car, and then minutes later, he hears a loud bang. There was a struggle that occurred because you can see that the refrigerator that was right there on the wall was pushed back. After he stepped out, was able to make himself outside of the door, he was shot on his right side up under his armpit. After he was shot, the two black males came running out of the front gate and my victim ran toward the back of the house and climbed the ladder and he proceeded to climb up on top of the roof. My witness sees these two black males run out from the gate and jumps in their car and they speed away southbound on 12th Avenue. My witness, in turn, jumps in, tries to crank up his car to drive off, but he drops his keys. So he runs out of his truck, leaves the door, driver's side door open, and he runs southbound and around the corner, and he hides behind a utility box until he sees the gray Ford Taurus that the two unknown black males were in sped southbound on Northwest 12th Avenue. So he waits a few minutes, and then he walks back north on Northwest 12th Avenue on the opposite side of the street. He comes back to the residence, and that's when he sees my victim on top of the roof. He calls 911. He notices my victim as being someone who he went to school with, and he knows him. So he calls out to him, help me, I've been shot. So he climbs on top of the roof and then he starts to apply pressure to the wound. He was conscious the entire time. An off-duty police officer arrived and also tried to render first aid and he distinctly asked the victim, who shot you? My victim didn't give him any information and that's when rescue arrived. So my victim was airlifted to Jackson Trauma. This occurred at 10, 16 in the morning and at 4.30, he expired after surgery. It was my first day back at work, and um, I was just with him the, you know, the night before. And it was weird because he didn't call me, and I kept checking my phone. It's like a routine. He calls me every morning. He checks on the baby. He didn't call. It was nothing. I just didn't hear from him. Um, I was at work. I got a call from North Miami detective. She kept saying, you know, we really need to speak to you. I told her I was gonna call her back. But so, another detective called my phone. I called my sister. She said, just answer the phone, just talk to them. I'm like, okay, I answered the phone and um, the detective, you know, I, I kept asking her. She, she didn't want to give me the information over the phone. And I'm like, please just talk to me, is he okay? And um. She was like, no, he's dead. I'm like, huh? My phone rang, my sister was calling me, and I missed the call. And then my other sister, Sally, called me. And uh, she said, you didn't hear? I said, hear what, Surge? I'm like, what happened to Surge? And in the middle of the street, I told her, turn around, I gotta, I gotta go back home. Something happened in the family. When I called my other sister, Edna, and she was like, yeah, Serge been shot, he's dead. I don't know how fast I drove that car that day to make it to my mom's house. I was on my break, my first break from work, and I just happened to watch the news. And I don't watch the news, I just happened to cut the TV on. And that was the first thing I saw, was his body laying on the stretcher, even though it wasn't that, it wasn't that close. I just knew it was him. I didn't want to believe it. I just kept saying no, you know, no. This can't be happening. And um, 
I called his mom because I didn't want to believe it. And I asked her, did she see the news? And she was like, no. And I told her to put it on. It's, they're still showing him. And she put it on. And she missed it. And I kept calling his friend, kept calling his friend. But after a while, I made it to the hospital. And um, they brought me into a room. And they told me, they told me there that he, um, that he died. And that's how I found out. On Monday, August 1st, 2011, my victim, Seiko Serge Bryson, was in an apartment located in North Miami. He was there visiting a friend. My victim answers the door. He was confronted with these two unknown black males. There was a struggle that occurred. After he stepped out, was able to make himself outside of the door, he was shot on his right side up under his armpit. My victim was airlifted to Jackson Trauma he expired after surgery. Like, I, I still can't believe he's not here. I, I can't believe it. I mean, I have our son. When he, when he died, he was only two months old. And I'm left to raise him, you know, without a father. It's hard because he looks just like him, you know? No matter how hard we think we are, we all has a broken point. And I know all the thugs or all the people that want to be thugs, they got the answers. They know right and wrong. You may live by the code, but you can also be a victim of the code. You know, there's no worse pain than having to lose a loved one. And just because of a stupid code, you don't do what's right. Now, how do we live in this society like that? Two people of interest that I'm looking for is one that's a passenger that was sitting in the silver Ford Taurus. He is dark skinned. He has fuzz up on his chin, skinny, about 180 pounds. He was wearing a tight fitted black shirt, khaki cargo shorts, and a black hunter's hat. The second subject is medium skin. He has a low haircut fade, and he was wearing a purple t-shirt with gray lettering on it. They fled southbound in the vehicle on Northwest 12th Avenue from 1 to 1 Street. If anybody has any information, please contact me, Detective Jones at North Miami Police Department with 305-891-0294, extension 23114, or you can call Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous. Um, this is my, si my son, Kai. He's 12 months now. He was two months when it happened. Hey. He looks just like his dad. Hey, I'm going to have to explain to him what happened. He's going to have questions about his dad I'm never going to be able to answer. North Miami detectives are looking for two black males. The first is described as average height, about 180 pounds, with fuzz on his chin, a tight black shirt, khaki shorts, and a black hunter's cap. The second had a medium complexion, a low fade haircut, and was wearing a purple t-shirt with gray lettering. If you have information that could help investigators solve this case, call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. You can remain anonymous and you'll be eligible for a cash reward. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers, South Florida Case Files. I'm Dick Masco. At 9.55 on May 15, 2011, 59-year-old Anthony Williams, a beloved family man, was found shot dead in his home in the 3800 block of Northwest 175th Street. Here's the story. Please, ma'am, I need a, I need a, oh, you know, we haven't heard from my, from my dad all day. We just went in the house and he's in the house. I'm going to see if he's in this house or an apartment. 
to the house. And tell me exactly what sure. happened. Um, we um we were trying to get in contact with him all day. We just came and checked that he's in the house on the floor in the pool of blood. Okay, is there any way you can get close to him to see if he's awake and breathing? That way I can give you instructions on how to help. No, he, he's cold as ice, ma'am. Okay, we already have help on the way, okay? Just try and stay Thank close. you. On May 15, 2011, Miami Gardens Police Department responded at approximately 9.55 p.m. to the area of 3881 Northwest 175th Street in Miami Gardens, Florida, reference an unresponsive black male. Once units arrived on scene along with Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, they found a black male who is unresponsive in his living room. Further investigation revealed that the individual was suffering from two gunshot wounds. Miami-Dade uh, fire Rescue pronounced the individual deceased and contacted the homicide unit to respond. Once Miami Gardens Police Department units arrived on scene, it was determined that the family was concerned for their father. They had not heard from their father, Mr. Anthony Williams, for some time. It was almost a 24-hour period, which is unusual. Mr. Anthony Williams contacted his family often. He always reached out to him. He had a loving relationship with his sons and daughters and his brothers and sisters in the family. During this 24-hour period, it was learned that Mr. Williams actually went to the McDonald's located at 183rd Street and Northwest 47th Avenue. Uh, Mr. Williams purchased a meal and went back to his residence. Uh, sometime that evening, Saturday, Mr. Williams either left again or had a visitor come to his residence. It's undetermined exactly what took place. Uh, we know that Mr. Williams did not contact his family after approximately 9 o'clock that night, though, on Saturday, which would have been May 14th. After Mr. Williams uh, either received a phone call from an individual or someone came to his residence, um, something occurred inside his residence. That is unknown at this time what actually occurred or if it was just somebody getting into a verbal discussion with him and resulting into a physical altercation where gunshots were fired. Mr. Williams was found with a gunshot wound to his back and he was missing some items from his person. Mr. Williams had a medical history which being shot the way in which he was killed with his medical history he, he did not have uh, great knees and they gave out on him often and it caused him to have difficulty walking and for him to have been shot in the back like he was um, this individual would not have had to do that just to take the money or his wallet. During the course of the investigation, I learned that there was no signs of break-in to either the inner or outer door of this residence. Uh, there were metal security screen dooring, uh, which prevented any individuals from entering the residence without a key. Mr. Williams' residence was very neat and meticulous. There wasn't stuff misplaced. There was no signs of any break-in to any windows or anything, so the motive here must not have been robbery or even a burglary. During the course of the investigation, I further learned that a vehicle was seen outside of Mr. Williams' residence. Um, this occurred approximately late night Saturday into the early morning hours of Sunday morning, which would have been May 15th. A neighbor did see a vehicle parked along the west corner of his residence, and it was unknown what that vehicle was actually doing in the area. Also, a neighbor observed an individual walking in that area, but it is unknown if that individual has any information leading to any further information that could help assist with this investigation. Mr. Anthony Williams was loved in his community from his fellow neighbors. He worked on cars often for them, and he would not even ask for the money up front. He would do the work, and whenever people would be able to pay him this money, and then later, once the work was completed, he actually would get paid. Um, so everyone really enjoyed his company. He was well liked. He has a huge family, uh, sons, daughters, uh, brothers, sisters, who love him dearly. At this time, the Miami Gardens Police Department, along with the Williams family, is asking the public's assistance to help solve this crime. Uh, there are no leads at this time that's going to help me solve this heinous crime which occurred to Mr. Anthony Williams. If anyone has any information on Mr. Williams' death, I please urge you to contact either myself at the Miami Gardens Police Department, that's Detective Zellner at 305-474-1622 or Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS or it's 305-471-8477. Police know that someone contacted Anthony either by phone or in person shortly before he was killed. He was also missing property when he was found. 
If you have information that can help investigators solve this case, call Crime Stoppers today at 305-471-TIPS. You can remain anonymous and you'll be eligible for a cash reward. Crime Stoppers of Miami-Dade has one goal, to make the streets safer for law-abiding citizens by solving cases and capturing criminals. To learn more about your local Crime Stoppers, become a fan on Facebook or log on to CrimestoppersMiami.com. Now I'm Dick Maston. Be sure to join us next week for another episode of Crime Stoppers Case Files.